The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, everybody. My name is Rob Galvin. Thanks for joining us today on the November edition of Dev Talks. So uh, we're going to jump right into the, the topic of today. Um, today's topic is about Data Wedge. So this tool has been around um, for a while. And uh, fortunately, we have uh, two great presenters to talk about it. Uh, we have Eddie Correa, who is uh, working on the documentation for, for Data Wedge, and he also does um, many other of our products, um, technical documentation. Um, so you'll see some of his work out on, on Tech Docs. And then we have Turindu, who I will, Turindu, I'm sorry, I will not try to pronounce your last name because I know I'll fail big time. Uh, but Turindu has been with the company for a long time and is one of the original uh, engineers responsible for uh, for Data Wedge. So great uh, resources we have today to uh, to talk about this topic. Um, we do have another Dev Talk coming up in December, so stay tuned for the uh, appointment if it's not already up on uh, the developer portal. And it'll be a printing related topic, um, and that'll be the last one for for the year. So stay tuned for that. And like always, you can always find these presentations on uh, developer.zebra.com. Uh, so uh, without further ado, let's let's get into the presentation. Eddie and Turindu, welcome. Eddie, I think you have the uh, control of the presentation if you want to get started. Thank you very much, Rob, and hello, everyone. Thanks very much for joining us today to talk about Data Wedge. I've spent a good part of the last few weeks updating the documentation for Data Wedge 6 and if you're a Data Wedge user now and you haven't had a chance to look at the new docs please do so and feel free to contact me with any input you might have it's at techdocs.zebra.com <clears throat> and Tech Wedge uh, Tech Docs is, is available uh, right now for you to look at so without further ado let's take a look um, at at Data Wedge. Now, if you're not familiar with what Data Wedge is, or maybe just to get a basic understanding, let's talk a little bit about what Data Wedge is and what it does. Um, hang on a minute. I'm getting a message that doesn't look good. Can you guys see my slides? So, Data Wedge is an app that provides data acquisition and. Yeah, Eddie, we can, we can okay. see your slides, Eddie. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, it was just paused for some reason. Okay, here we go. Yeah. So, so Data Wedge is an app on a Zebra device that provides data acquisition and processing services for other apps on the device. So, exactly what it does is it acquires data from whatever devices are connected or installed in the, in the, uh, in the device. It can be a barcode scanner, magstripe reader, RFID reader, imager, whatever. And then it processes the data according to simple or complex rules. So a simple rule might be take everything you get and stick it in a field. A complex rule might be take the first four characters, skip the next two characters, and take the rest and plug it in. Or it can be pay at the front with zeros, pay at the back with zeros. Rules can accumulate, and they can be very, very complex and sophisticated. So it can pretty much do anything that you want with the data. Then um, it can also activate itself whenever a selected app is run. So if you have an app on a device that's in your organization, you say, I always want Data Wedge to be active when this app is running. You can set it up that way as well. You can import and export settings for mass deployment. So you can say, okay, this device is set up exactly the way I want it to work in my organization. I can export those settings, send them to my MDM, and send it to all the devices in a given location. And then all the devices will behave in exactly the same way. Um, it sends data to a local app or to a network. So if I want the data to be sent to it, be acquired and sent to a server someplace and stored there for further processing or uh, manipulation or, or plugged into an application of some other kind, you can do that too. It works on Android and Windows devices and it supports all major barcode symbologies. So no worries about something that's not compatible. Zebra is constantly updating the symbologies that we, uh, that we support. It also can work as a wireless scanner. So check this out. You can have a device in your warehouse that is scanning data and instead of saving it to a local app, you can have it send data to a PC over Wi-Fi. So all you do is run a little utility on the PC and it sits there waiting for data come in to come in. And then it plugs the data in wherever you want. So it turns the device into a sort of a wireless scanner. So that's pretty handy. 
and you can reconfigure Data Wedge on the fly. So let's suppose that someone in the warehouse says, hey, you know, I, I just got a shipment and there's a barcode on here and it's not scanning. I don't know how to process this. The guys in IT can quickly create a new configuration, beam it down to the device, and voila, it takes effect immediately. And now the warehouse can, uh, can immediately receive that, uh, that shipment. All of these features are done without ever touching any APIs. So you can build your app the way you want and never have to worry that you're going to be able to access the scanning capabilities of a Zebra device. It's, it's all done for you through Data Wedge. So now I know what your next question is going to be. Where can I buy this fantastic product? Data Wedge is amazing. Well, the answer is you can't buy it because it comes free with every Zebra device. How great is that? I'll pause now and let that sink in a little bit. Okay, now, how does Data Wedge work? Well, how does this fantastic, this must be so complicated to set up. Well, guess what, it's really not. It works on the concept of profiles, and these profiles contain settings that determine how data is to be acquired, in other words, th through which device, how to be processed, and how to be sent to wherever you need it to go. So let's talk about each of those things a little bit. So profiles generally contain four elements. First is the input plugin. That says, okay, get, get data from a barcode scanner or a magstripe reader or a ring scanner or whatever device you want to get the data from. You tell it which device to look at and get the data from. That's the input plugin. The process plugin says, okay, the data that comes in from that device, here's what I want you to do with it. So this, this diagram shows a postal barcode. So the first five digits are the regular zip code, then there's four more that the postal company added to further identify a, a location, and then there's some additional data that they tack on the back. Well, you can say, okay, only give me the first five, or you can give me the plus four as well, and so on and so forth. So that's pretty self-explanatory. And then the output plugin determines where the data should go once it's been acquired and processed. And then, of course, comes the association. So once you've created a profile and you've set up the input, the process, and the output plugins, then you say, okay, apply all of these settings to this application or these applications or whatever, and then you're done. And once that's all set up, again, you can send it to additional devices, deploy it to everything in, everyone in your organization, and so on and so forth. A very, very easy to use utility that comes free with every Zebra device. So with that, um, let's talk about Data Wedge 6.0. And for that, I'll turn it over to uh, to Tarinda Velagodopola. He's the uh, senior engineer in Zebra's advanced engineering department. Tarindu, over to you. Okay, thank you, Eddie. Uh, I hope uh, uh, the screen can be visible. Yeah, we can see your slides, Tarindu. Okay, uh, let me start with the uh, uh, Welcoming you all, and uh, this is uh, I'm going to talk about uh, what are the features Data Wedge 6.0 has, and especially what are the new features that uh, you will get with 6.0. So uh, going on, uh, we support barcode scanning, MSR, and CIMASCAN document capture um, in uh, many of the uh, Zebra devices. Um, and then uh, data dispatching capabilities uh, such as keystrokes, intents, and IP output. Um, these features will allow you to uh, get the data that you captured uh, to your application without writing a single code uh, specific to data capturing. So uh, additionally, um, as uh, Eddie also mentioning a few things, uh, so data processing is possible and uh, through uh, advanced data capturing or basic data capturing. Uh, and the beauty of the uh, data wedge is that you, you can specify the configuration to your own application. So different applications uh, can wor work with different data wedge settings. So if you want a data wedge 
to scan barcodes to your one of the uh, applications and then you need uh, uh, to swipe a um, uh, credit card uh, and get the data to your uh, payment application you can do so by configuring data edge and you don't need to write any code for that uh, data edge demo app is a applet that uh, you can use uh, to see the performance as well as uh, the output of data before you try out in your own application data capture plus is a like a virtual button on the screen where you can use it as a uh, trigger button uh, to capture uh, barcodes uh, I will show you uh, what, what what these capabilities are uh, when we move on the slide deck the configuration import and export this is uh, very useful when it comes to mass deployment um, you can uh, have your golden device uh, configured and uh, you can simply export the configuration and extract it and uh, simply uh, push across uh, thousands of devices instance instantly the so we talk about uh, zero programming or no code at all but if you are really need to have more control over data which we have set up uh, programming uh, or the intents we you can use uh, to control data which uh, I will go through them uh, at the end of the uh, slide deck uh, so in detail so let's uh, move on so maybe you have already tried out uh, data which uh, up to 5.0 uh, or 5.1 maybe uh, with uh, new uh, devices um, so coming up to uh, data with 6.0, uh, uh, there is a uh, new uh, feature called disable app list, where you uh, you can uh, basically select set of uh, uh, applications which does not require data capturing. So basically, you can have a security over uh, data capturing, and uh, also you can avoid conflicts between application uh, interaction. Uh, ADF updates, uh, previously we didn't have a way to remove uh, characters uh, from the captured data. You need to uh, basically tweak with uh, whatever the available uh, ADF actions. Now you can simply um, uh, use single uh, ADF action and uh, remove characters. You can remove it from the front, you can remove it from the end, or you can even remove it from the middle uh, of the uh, data. Uh, escape character support uh, in ADF criteria. Uh, one of the major issues uh, or the major problems that uh, customers face was that there are unprintable characters you need to check in uh, the captured data. So, uh, for example, GS character is uh, a common usage uh, uh, here, or even uh, uh, a control control characters which are embedded in the uh, barcodes. Um, they they it was not easy to check th those uh, characters. So we have introduced uh, uh, the new feature. Uh, it is not a new feature, extend the uh, string criteria to um, uh, check the uh, non-printable characters as well in the device right, uh, or the ADF criteria. Uh, keystroke plugin uh, has few uh, new features, key event delay, where you can avoid uh, miss uh, decodes or miss uh, uh, transferring data uh, data to your application, especially when you have uh, control characters such as uh, uh, enter key, tap key uh, in middle of this uh, data, where you, uh, when you expect uh, the data to be dispatched uh, uh, along multiple text fields with the tap or enter key. So, due to uh, 
with the key when delay you can uh, guarantee that uh, the data will be dispatched correctly to your application. Uh, multibyte character delay is uh, again uh, for barcode data or any other data with uh, uh, multibyte characters such as uh, Unicode characters, um, uh, non-English characters. So this delay can be used to get them dispatched correctly. Uh, then, uh, so one of the headaches uh, with the existing data which uh, application selection was that uh, it was not in a uh, sorted manner. So basically you need to find exactly to your um, application and then pick it from the list. Now the application list is sorted and you can simply uh, pick the correct uh, or the required application straight away. Okay, uh, now let's move to barcode scanning. Uh, it's simple as one, two, three, and uh, you get a device, uh, any device, I mentioned Falcon here. Uh, install your application and then simply scan a barcode. Right? So, barcode data will be dispatched to your application um, and uh, your uh, text field will be uh, filled with. Uh, the data you just captured. So um, I will demonstrate uh, how um, a, a barcode can be uh, manipulated uh, to dispatch among multiple uh, text fields. So if we take a look at this, so we basically the scan one two three four five six seven eight nine zero n y and uh, we wanted to uh, dispatch uh, along manufacturer part number and destination fields. So uh, you, you basically uh, can do that with uh, uh, simple ADF uh, configuration and uh, we will discuss more on uh, when we move to uh, ADF how we can do that. Um, MSR input is uh, basically to uh, use in your payment applications uh, where you can uh, swipe your credit card and get the data uh, you need. Cyber uh, scan feature is one of the uh, very uh, robust uh, feature uh, where you will get to scan a form. It is not only barcodes, but you can have your um, text fields, check boxes, or signatures captured to your application. So this is uh, becoming a very popular feature in uh, Zebra devices nowadays. So let's uh, see how. Uh, uh, Cyma uh, scan uh, can be used by scanning a form. So this, um, the right hand side, uh, uh, is the device where you captured set of fields from a fo uh, form directly to your application at a single click. So the address um, is highlighted here in the first box. And uh, then the barcode was scanned uh, and it is there in the uh, code and the description uh, is uh, transferred to the uh, description uh, field. <coughs> so let's uh, see how we can process the data. Um, so we are scanning the same barcode that we demonstrated last time, um, uh, and it has basically ten, uh, 10 digits and two characters. Now, what we need to do was that we need to send the first five characters uh, to the manufacturer field. Then the next 
five characters to the part number and then the destination uh, will be sent to uh, the destination uh, field. So basically you can have this uh, done this by uh, uh, having five uh, simple ADF actions. So you basically send first five characters, uh, send next action can be used, then the send tap character which will tap the cursor to the next field and then send uh, remaining will send the rest of the data to the destination uh, field. So this is uh, pretty much useful when you have the keystrokes uh, uh, output selected and if you are using intents you can uh, have it uh, in a more programmatic way. So I will uh, uh, explain how you can do them. Uh, do that uh, when I move to uh, intent output. So processing uh, data in your application. So we discuss about um, without writing a code to get data to your application. That can be done using um, keystrokes output. But if you want more data, like what is the uh, barcode type, or what is the length of the barcode, or maybe uh, the input source, whether it came from a scanner, MSR, or Simon scan, you can use intent output. So basically, you have metadata such as uh, symbology or the uh, labeled uh, barcode type, uh, the barcode data, barcode length, uh, and even barcode data in in the raw format where you have the bytes where you can translate it to any way you want when you have the raw data format. So simple and standard Android programming, you don't need rocket science to uh, do that. Um, simple but very uh, efficient. There are three ways you can uh, handle intents. Uh, it can be in your activity or it can be in your service or it can be a broadcast receiver that you have wrote in your application where you can receive the data uh, in the background. So the receiving data as keystrokes is uh, the most commonly used feature uh, where you don't need any programming uh, in your application to get the uh, data from uh, data which Data is input uh, intent output plugin dispatches data using uh, Android intents um, and uh, requires very little programming uh, standard way. Intent data carries additional information such as input source, symbology, uh, data length, um, gives extra flex flexibility in validating the data and even uh, uh, separating out uh, and dispatching the uh, data or fill your forms in a correct or more easy way. So there are a set of uh, uh, intent extras uh, that uh, defined by DataWitch uh, to get the uh, data to your application. So these are standard uh, stuff and uh, these are well documented in uh, tech docs as well. So one of the uh, high profile uh, feature uh, in DataWitch is uh, the DataWitch IP output plugin where you can transmit uh, the captured data over, over to a remote server via network and uh, the receiving uh, server can be act as a barcode scanner. So simply whatever the data you captured can be dispatched 
to the application in the foreground uh, without uh, uh, doing anything uh, to your data. So uh, there is a powerful tool called IP Wedge, uh, which is com uh, which can be installed in the PC side, and Data Wedge. Only data wedge knows how to communicate with IP wedge. Any, uh, so no other application can send data to IP wedge and get them uh, dispatched as it is. So there is a security uh, built up between uh, data wedge and IP wedge set so that only uh, those two components can communicate together and get the correct results. You can download this uh, from the support central uh, and uh, it is pretty uh, easy to use uh, tool. Data processing, um, I have gone through a little over uh, this one in um, uh, the previous slides, so advanced data formatting, uh, which gives you rule-based configuration. Um, so you can basically categorize the data how you need to uh, be processed. So let's say you have uh, two types of uh, barcodes, where one is code 128 and one is code 39, and you need to separate, uh, dispatch them in a different manner so that uh, you can use ADF to um, uh, process them uh, according to your requirements. BDF uh, or the basic data formatting is a simple um, processing where you, you can basically add uh, a prefix or suffix to the data uh, or maybe you can convert that to uh, uh, hex data. Uh, you can basically, uh, hex data, when you convert uh, them to hex data, you can basically um, validate whether the data is in the correct format that uh, you uh, have encoded in the barcode itself. Uh, each output plugin uh, has a data processing configuration. So per output, you can uh, process uh, in dif uh, differently. So for that, you can uh, enable both uh, intent and IP output in the same profile and you can get the data to the application running in the device uh, by processing the same data in a different manner and the data sending over to the over through network can be processed uh, in a different manner so that is a uh, somewhat powerful uh, option for you So uh, this explains uh, an, a use case where how you can uh, use uh, ADF rules. Customer has two batches of code 39 uh, barcodes. In one batch, each barcode is fixed length of 10, 10 characters, and other batch is fixed length of 12 characters. So the application expects the first six characters to be dispatched to the application uh, from the batch one and the last eight characters from the batch two. So the rule one says the bar barcode length or the data length should be set to 10 and it should be a code 39 and uh, the action will be performed as send next six. So the first six bar uh, char characters will be dispatched to the application. When it comes to rule two, the barcode length is uh, set as 12 and uh, it is the same code 39 but you have skip ahead two where you will uh, skip two characters from the front and send remaining will send the rest of the data where the 10 characters will be dispatched. So, um, ADF, we, uh, I, I mentioned that uh, we have new remove characters uh, uh, action. Uh, uh, so basically, uh, you can uh, remove characters 
uh, from the front and if we go back a bit and uh, here we are using uh, two actions um, skip ahead to and send remaining so instead of uh, skip ahead to we can uh, remove use the remove characters and uh, remove two characters from the front and then uh, send the remaining uh, data okay data capture plus so this is uh, the extension of uh, previously known uh, as data capture panel uh, and uh, this has a new look and feel and uh, much improved uh, functionality so basically uh, you can enable uh, data capture plus per data wedge profile so if you have two profiles and if you need uh, data capture plus to be available only in your uh, first application you can configure the pr profile one or your uh, profile associated with your application one uh, and uh, use uh, the DCP in your application so you have two modes uh, where you can have the button mode and uh, full screen mode and uh, you can control them and you can uh, toggle them uh, by just uh, swiping out and uh, you can move the button or tag the button to the left side of the screen or the right side of the screen and whatever the runtime changes will be made, uh, persistent and uh, when you come to the uh, application again the DCB will be displayed in the last uh, uh, kept position So the DW demo is um, an application that you can use to pre-test uh, uh, the output of your data and you can simply modify the DW demo uh, profile in your application uh, for your application and then just try out the output with the DW demo and you can confirm uh, whether the data is correctly received to your application or not. Data wedge configuration. The data wedge configuration has two ways to keep it. One is local configuration where you have uh, a UI based uh, configuration tool or EMDK profile manager which is uh, which you may require EMDK uh, uh, for Android uh, plugins uh, with your Android studio and uh, you can create your own profiles as you wish and then through your application you can configure data wedge uh, as you require. Remote uh, configuration is where you pre-configure the data wedge in one device, you export the configuration and then mass deploy across uh, thousands of devices as you wish. So these, these configurations are picked instantly and uh, it is very uh, useful when you configure my, uh, many devices. So I will go through a little bit of, uh, along the, uh, the configuration UI that you have uh, with DataWitch. Um, so uh, once you open uh, the DataWitch, you will get uh, the list of uh, profile profiles uh, and you can pick uh, a single profile and configure as you uh, wish so these are ordered in uh, first you have the data capture plus and then uh, barcode input uh, in profile zero but if you pick uh, any other profile you will have uh, the application association as well in uh, under uh, after profile enabled. Profiles can be created, edited and deleted. Profile can be associated with an application but you cannot associate any application to profile zero uh, where, uh, which is a special uh, profile in data which. So 
So profile uh, configuration contains, you can enable or disable the profile. Uh, when profile is enabled, your uh, data capturing is enabled. And if your profile is disabled, your data capturing will be disabled. Associated apps, uh, each application, uh, individual applications can have their own uh, data with settings. Uh, data capture uh, panel or data capture plus will provide you uh, the virtual button uh, on your application where you can avoid using uh, uh, specified scan button uh, but use uh, data capture plus uh, on your application. Barcode input, MSR input if the device supports MSR. Simus uh, can document capture if uh, Simus can is supported in your in your device. Keystrokes output uh, is there intent output, IP output, and for each output uh, plugin, uh, you have the basic and advanced data formatting uh, listed under each. Automatic profile switching. So uh, let's say you have an application and uh, your application uh, uh, requires to enable specific set of configuration or the scanner parameters or set of decoders uh, like code 128, code 39 uh, and your second application needs the default uh, behavior of the device. So you can uh, have a profile and uh, associate it to your application by just uh, going through the application selection and assign that. And then when you uh, scan the uh, barcodes or capture data, you will get uh, that data only to your application. So by disabling profile zero, what you can do is you limit only the data uh, coming through the configured profile for your application uh, will be dispatched only to your application. So uh, that is uh, one way of uh, securing your data uh, or data capturing only to your application. So the coming back to uh, remote configuration again data which has dedicated folder where it looks for configuration uh, files. Uh, user can uh, use any MSP or stage now client uh, to uh, push these uh, DB files. It's uh, a powerful feature when uh, doing mass deployment across thousands of devices. Right. So so far we discussed um, mainly on uh, not writing any much of a code, but uh, now um, I'm going to talk about few things that you can do uh, or control uh, data wedge by doing simple uh, set of uh, coding. You can uh, have a soft scan trigger uh, by sending an intent. Uh, so basically you can have a dedicated uh, scan button in your application and by pressing uh, you can basically send an intent uh, when you tap on the button and start the scan uh, scanner. So this, uh, this can be useful when uh, your device does not want uh, the trigger to be used for scanning but uh, uh, has a dedicated uh, trigger button on your application. So, uh, when, uh, when you uh, want to have both camera, uh, want to use camera for your picture taking as well as um, uh, the barcode scanning, what you can do is uh, you can use the second uh, 
item listed here, scan input plugin intent, where you can either enable or disable the scanner, barcode scanner, as required. So for example, if you, uh, the same application uh, you're using, want to capture uh, a, a picture using your uh, camera, you can basically send the intent to disable the uh, barcode scanning and then take the picture and send another intent to enable barcode scanning so that you can use both the features where you can capture a, a, a picture as well as a barcode in your application. You can uh, check what are the available scanners by using enumerate scanners intent uh, and you can you can further uh, configure data wedge or switch data wedge settings runtime by using set default profile or reset default profile or switch to profile. So these are well documented in tech docs and uh, I think it is much clearer than uh, uh, simply discussing here. Uh, so I, I would prefer you to uh, go through the documents. They are very explanatory. So this is um, uh, an example of how you can uh, send a soft scan trigger intent. Uh, this is uh, the soft scan trigger intent uh, uh, namespace uh, is there uh, and extra data um, is there where you can mention whether it is to start scanning or stop scanning. So you need to create an intent uh, object and then set the action to the soft scan trigger action and then put some uh, put the extra um, to pass the extra parameter where now you are sending start scanning to um, emit the scan beam and then simply broadcast the uh, intent. So that's uh, mainly about uh, the features and uh, features that data with 6.0 has and uh, you you have all the required documents uh, or the details in tech docs uh, for you so this is the url uh, for you and uh, i think that's mainly about uh, it from my end and uh, if you have any questions uh, i'm ready to answer them all right Tarindu, yeah um, there are uh, uh, quite a few questions so just as a reminder, if you have any questions while we're kind of finishing up here, just type them into the question uh, section of GoToWebinar. So, uh, Turindu, let's talk about kind of a, a common issue that um, a lot of people run up against with when using Data Wedge in conjunction with other applications that may be using uh, barcode API. So, you know, how can you avoid um, conflicts or issues when you're using Data Wedge uh, along with, with custom applications? Um, you know, kind of running at the same time? What sort of strategies, um, maybe you can kind of summarize what the issue is and what people should try uh, to avoid and how can they avoid it? So basically, if you're, if you're talking about um, uh, you, uh, or users uh, using uh, EMDK application with, uh, which uses EMDK barcode APIs and with data which, right? Yeah, so let's say you have an application that's using EMDK and it's loaded the same time that another application is using Data Wedge. There may be some conflicts in accessing the the barcode scanner, okay. right? So, yeah, so that uh, those complexities are uh, basically handled between the EMDK and Data Wedge, and usually you don't uh, uh, see much uh, much uh, issues there, but in case you have like some synchronization issues where um, you don't see uh, the barcode scanner getting enabled, uh, the best way to do is allow some time uh, uh, in your application um, when it comes to the foreground and uh, then uh, uh, enable the barcode scanner through uh, EMDK. 
So that way uh, it allows uh, data which to freeze, uh, uh, release uh, the scanner and uh, then you can use uh, the scanner with, through uh, EMDK APIs. It's a common issue that uh, that comes up uh, on the developer community is um, you know why I've I've activated the scanner why isn't it uh, enabled in my application and it's important to know that the use of the scanning hardware is exclusive if, if data wedge is enabled and active no other application will be able to access the scanner until data wedge releases control and whatever application is using the scanner has exclusive control of the scanner so it must explicitly release the control of the scanner before another app will be able to uh, access it and that's clearly documented on tech docs in, in several locations because I thought it was important enough to make sure that folks knew that because it's a question that does come up quite often so you need to make sure that you disable the scanner uh, you just you can disable data wedge entirely if you if you need to uh, to make the scanner available to your app. Actually, one uh, one suggestion uh, on this one is that uh, you have uh, this new feature of uh, disable app list, and uh, in the disable app list, what you can do is uh, you can uh, assign uh, data which uh, under disable app list uh, application list. You can uh, list your application where you don't need data which to be used for data capturing. So in okay. that case, uh, in that case you can uh, basically uh, uh, command data which to release its resources when your application comes to the foreground. Okay, so and that's a new feature in 6L? Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah that sounds very handy. I mean basically what you're saying is um, you know, turn off data wedge if the following applications are running and then you would identify those that are using barcode basically and then it releases it essentially. Okay, cool. All right, um, let's talk about another new feature. Let's talk about Data Capture Plus. Okay, this is a, I think this is a new feature to 6.0, I may be mistaken, but um, when, so let's talk about the use cases. When would you suggest that you use Data Capture Plus versus the actual physical trigger button? Yeah, so uh, in some devices like uh, the Cremo, uh, your, you have a trigger button at the uh, back of the uh, device, right? Mm -hmm. But you may be uh, wearing it, uh, wearing the tablet on your arm at times. So you can simply uh, enable the um, uh, data capture plus and uh, then uh, by looking at the uh, screen while you are doing some some uh, uh, navigation on your application when you are uh, when you are ready to scan you can just uh, uh, touch the uh, data capture plus and you can basically scan the barcode okay so it's gonna it's gonna depend um, on a lot, typically like the the physical use of the device. Are you are you you know looking at the screen? Are you are you tapping the screen? Um, is it easier for the user to do that as opposed to tap you know pulling the trigger wherever that is? In your case, you're talking about a wearable, and the trigger is is uh, possibly somewhere yeah. else, right? But okay. Any other suggestions for uh, data capture plus usage? Yeah, uh, I, I don't think we uh, yet to have uh, all touch devices, uh, but uh, devices which does not have uh, much of hardware keys um, can also be used. Okay. Uh, so future devices possibly that are just all touch. Okay, got it. Um, another question regarding let's see data wedge 6 is this just uh, Android or is this Windows devices as well this version this is uh, only Android version okay so it's only Android version we're not planning on releasing an updated data wedge for Windows devices is that correct yes okay 
All right, um, cool, let's see, let's see, is this, okay, uh, next question was, is it possible to use camera and the barcode reader at the same time? Yeah, uh, so uh, that's what I uh, explained in one of the, uh, so there is a way to, uh, or the inter there is an interface uh, uh, to application, uh, which can be used to notify data which to disable the scanner. So, for example, uh, on your application, uh, when it comes to the foreground, data which uh, uses uh, the barcode scanner to capture barcodes. But when your application needs to capture an image, you can send an intent from your application to disable the uh, barcode scanner. And you can uh, use basic uh, Android APIs to capture a, a image and then re-enable this uh, barcode scanner with data wedge by sending another intent. So it, it, it requires some uh, uh, configuration or programming, but that is possible. Okay, I think that answered that question. If it, if it didn't, if, if you can just kindly um, follow up with another question. Um, I believe we hit most of the, um, the questions. There was one other one which, which I had answered, um, which I think was satisfied, but I want to ask it anyway since we have a few more minutes. But it has to do with um, GS1 barcodes and um, any recommendations for... Um, intent output in handling GS1 barcodes in terms of separating the contents. He was asking about, you know, is it possible to kind of separate the the barcode before sending the intent? And and um, I was recommending that he basically just handles that inside of the the code when the intent is received. Um, any thoughts on on GS1 GS characters or un unreadable characters when using an intent output? Uh, so, if if the requirement is um, so, let me let me read out uh, the question again and to clarify. Do you see the question there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, so uh, if you want to separate out uh, as, uh, the data with uh, multiple intents, uh, there is a way to do that. That is by adding a pose between the uh, data separation. So there is a um, data which uh, ADF action called uh, send pose, which uh, you can uh, set a time interval between the data. So uh, let's say you send first five characters, then send pause for two, sec uh, two seconds, and then send the remaining, you will get two intents with that. Ah, so an ADF action send post, is that what you said? That's basically sending an intent in the middle of processing? Yeah. Ah, okay, that's interesting. Yes. And think about that. Um, does this barcode have like different characters that like, what is the significance of the GS1 barcode symbology? Is there unreadable characters or any special handling that you would need to, like, why would you need to chop it up like that? Uh, GS1, that the group separator. Uh, group oh, okay. separator character. Okay, got it. So, so into the different groups. Data, right, right. Okay. Data is contained in one string, but it's separated by something, and that something is the GS character. Ah, uh, okay. That makes sense, Eddie. Thank you. Okay. Um, I think that answered the question. Matt, if there's any other follow-up on that, please let us know. We do have a few more minutes. If you uh, want to uh, add, uh, uh, separate out like uh, uh, GS characters, what you can uh, currently do is you can have the escape sequences where you can either use backslash X or backslash U uh, in your action. Uh, to move the uh, 
data until that all. So let's say send up to GS character. That means send up to backslash X. Uh, as I remember, the GS character was 1D. Backslash X 1D would send the data until GS character. And then you can skip ahead uh, the character and then send the remaining so that you basically can uh, separate out uh, the data uh, besides uh, GS character. Okay. All right. Um, so we're, we're kind of reaching the end of the call. Are there any other questions that we need to ask to Rindu or Eddie? Um, while we're kind of waiting for the last questions, I just want to thank you all again for, for taking the time out of your day to attend this session live. I know you, you have a busy day, so I appreciate you coming. Um, the next session that we do have is December 14th, and it's, it is posted on uh, Launchpad or the developer portal, uh, as we're calling it nowadays. Um, and it's about label design um, when it comes to printing, so creating unique labels, clear labels for your application, a good detailed look at label design for uh, for printing applications. So be sure to tune into that one. Um, I don't see any follow up questions coming in. So I want to thank you, Eddie and Turindu, for coming on. It's amazing. Data Wedge has uh, this the small utility application that's on every single device has been around for so long and is so mission critical to a lot of um, enterprise applications. Um, so uh, thanks for, for presenting today. I hope everybody had found this information useful and uh, look forward to any feedback you have on this session. When you end the call, let us know how well we're doing. Let us know about topics that you'd like to see in future uh, sessions. We are planning our sessions for next year, believe it or not already, um, as well as taking into, into account some feedback and suggestions for our upcoming app forums in 2017. So let us know uh, what you'd like to hear. What are the important topics? We'll be sure to cover them in upcoming Dev Talks. So, Eddie or Turin, do you have anything else uh, you want to mention in closing? Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Okay. All right. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. We'll see you uh, next time on December 14th. Thanks again for coming, and we'll see you next time.